Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. However you're catching us, um, if you're catching this on the live stream, it is Monday. No, it's not Monday. It's Friday. Friday, what is it, the 19th? Friday, the February 19th. It's at 11, 11 a.m. 11, 11 a.m. going live here um, in my office. And um, like I've said in the past, I'm excited to be back in my office here, this office space. Um, so... Uh, doing a lot of a lot of good work over here so I um, wanted to give you an update on brunch at uh, aroma time brunch was um, brunch was something we did uh, for many many years at, at aroma time when COVID hit of course we could not have any indoor dining anymore and then when we started opening again in June for indoor our outdoor outdoor dining in June then we were able to get indoor dining um, we just haven't brought brunch back we haven't even brought Saturday and Sunday lunch back um, so we kind of altered our hours um, going forward. The good news is Governor Cuomo has is now allowing us to stay open an extra hour every night. Instead of 10 o'clock, I've openly spoken about this, that I felt it was unfair for them to limit our hours, uh, especially at nighttime like that. Um, we're a restaurant. Uh, the same people that are eating at 8.30 or the same people that want to come in at 10.30 and eat or 10 o'clock or 9.30 and have to be rushed out. And most nights I was asking people to leave, um, which was hurting my business. People that are sitting at a table, um, socially distanced, that are eating. And um, so I was very, very outspoken about that. Governor Cuomo has now said, it's 11 o'clock now, which is good. So good morning, everybody tuning in. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Joel. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Aileen. Hi, Connie. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Susan. Um, good morning, everybody. Just drop a comment where you're tuning in from. Um, hi, Judy. So do you have... Hi, Mary. Hi, Megan. Um, drop a comment. Um, did you get a snow day today? Did you have to work um, or did you um, have a snow day today or a delay? Uh, a couple of teachers are on here. Um, so, um, good morning, everybody. Hi, Laura. Um, so, uh, yeah, drop a comment where you're tuning in from and if you had a snow day or not. Um, so, Jamie and I were out shoveling some snow a little earlier today. Um, a lot of cool things going on here at the restaurant. Um, a lot of cool things going on um, in my um, coaching business. Um, I have uh, decided to formally um, document everything we've done um, uh, during COVID to help other restaurant tours to, uh, to succeed. So pretty excited about that. Been talking to a lot of other restaurant tours lately. Um, so. Um, Eileen says she's on winter break. Nice winter break. Um, Melissa says no snow day. I'm a nurse. No days off. I can imagine. Um, thank you for um, your all of your hard work, Melissa, and anybody else who is who is um, on the front lines. Thanks says hubby works overnight. Got home at two a.m. Um, thanks, Mary. Mary's in Gramsville. Hi, Karen. Um, Karen says it's snowing. Yeah, it's snowing here too still. Jamie and I shoveled and we went back out and there was another light dusting. Uh, we were open last night. We were open last night and we had a few tables. Not as many takeouts um, because people just didn't want to drive. But it is a holiday week. It is President's Week. So we have a lot of people up in Airbnbs. I know our Airbnb is um, booked all week. Um, our Airbnb has been very busy. We got an awesome review today. Um, one of our last guests from Verbo that came in. Verbo is another site that um, that uh, it's like Airbnb. So this was a guest that was here like two weeks ago. Um, this place is an oasis. The property was not only beautiful, but it came with everything you could possibly need. The pictures do not do it justice. As for Marcus, while well, his twenty plus years in the hospitality shows, twenty plus years in the hospitality shows. Um, he was the ultimate host and was sweet as could be. Uh, we got snowed in. Uh, he did not try to take advantage, but instead offered a major discount so we did not have to drive in the snow. They were here a couple weeks ago and it was like really, really snowing on a Sunday. And we usually get like, I don't know, 1200 a night to 2000 a night for the property. And I basically just gave it to him for like 500 bucks. I was like, you know, I don't want you guys to drive. If you're saying just take take it for 500 a night, and they took it for two extra nights like that because um, the snow just kept coming and coming. 
Um, the alcohol that he stocks with the smaller bar helped us easy extra 48 hours uh, with our indoors with our eight kids, uh, six kids, six kids. He literally has thought of everything and it shows. I highly recommend staying here. I cannot wait to go back and have already started trying to plan a large family reunion there next summer. So um, that came from one of our recent reviews on Verbo. Um, so that was awesome. Um, Jamie and I are really having fun doing the Airbnb, a lot of fun doing the Airbnb. Um, I've mentioned before, you know, I used to work, um, I used to work um, at the Broadmoor and at the Greenbrier in um, West Virginia and in Colorado Springs. And these two properties are amazing. I don't know if I have any of the books here. I have the books, I have the books next door. Um, yeah, I have the Broadmoor and Green, Greenbrier book next door. Um, really two beautiful, beautiful properties. And, and I learned a lot about hospitality there, um, taking care of the guests. Um, um, a lot of things we teach here at the restaurant. Uh, but those, both those hotels put you through a lot of training before you can even like walk on the grounds and even be in contact with the guests, especially the Broadmoor. The Broadmoor had a week long orientation. This was back in the early nineties, a week long orientation, um, about you know, everything about history, about customer service. Um, and I remember the one thing the Greenbrier taught us was you can have a 99% success rate, 99% approval rate. Um, but that 1%, that one person out of a hundred, that 1%, that's a hundred percent of their experience. So of course, 99 wasn't good enough. It was, you had to be a hundred percent. And this is where, you know, we were just taught you do whatever you have to do to take care of the guests. Um, you predict the guests next move. I mean, like, like, what are they going to do next? Like, and we teach this to our staff all the time, to our team members. We have a call with them this morning here in a little while. If somebody orders coffee. What's the next step? They're probably going to want sugar. They're probably going to want cream. They're probably going to need a spoon to stir it all. That's the next step. So just forecast and don't make them ask. Um, go out of your way. One of the big things um, at the Green at the Broadmoor was we were not we were not allowed to point. So if somebody says where is the North Building, you know where's the restroom, we were not allowed to stick our fingers out. We actually physically had to take the person there, or describe to them where it was across the lake. Go over the bridge. The main building is there. When you walk in, go to the left hand side, and you'll see the golf pro shop. You'll see the Orvis shop, whatever it is. That's we had, but we had to learn the whole lay of the property, and then be able to do that. And we did a lot of role playing in orientation on where to describe things. And they would walk us around and show us, and and do that. It was a really really intense. I mean, they basically paid you your wage all week long, uh, and paid a trainer, and they did this every other week for new employees um, to do orientation. I know there's probably ten people in orientation. Um, in my group, and um, I had a lot of advantages. I grew up in Colorado Springs and uh, went ice skating right behind the Broadmoor um, in their Olympic. Um, in the uh, we went ice skating, that was our field trips. We used to go ice skating right across the street to the Broadmoor's uh, Olympic ice skating ring, which is where the U.S. ice skating um, Olympic, um, I guess, committee is. And Dorothy Hamill would always be skating there. Um, when, when I go as a kid, so I kind of knew the property a little bit. Um, so it was really, but it was really fun going to work there. So yeah, so Jamie and I are really happy to be back um, in that kind of in that kind of hospitality realm. Um, it's just, um, I, in fact, it's it's based when other people are asking us, like the questions they ask us about other Airbnbs. Like we have three fire, we have two fire, one fireplace inside and two fire pits outside. And one of the questions is, a lot of people ask us do we have to bring our own firewood? Like I would never rent a house out. I would never rent anything out um, and expect a guest to bring their own firewood. But I guess some, the, some people have told me, oh no, a lot of Airbnbs do not provide firewood. Like we have to go and buy like bundles of firewood at like 7-Eleven or wherever they're going, like at Stewart's. I'm like, really? That just seems like, like no matter how much you get a night, you just charge extra and build it into the cost and don't have the guests have to go bring firewood. Imagine, you know, you're going away on vacation up into the country and, um, and you pack your car. There's not much room in your car. Then you have to worry about firewood. So I just think that's odd. That's a very common question from every single guest that's coming to the place. Do we have to bring our own firewood? Of course you don't. Um, so yeah, so just things like that. I think Jamie and I may, 
should write maybe a course for um, for other Airbnb owners on just hospitality. So um, because uh, a lot of this stuff and, and every, everything we have in the house, um, we provided all the individual portion packets of ketchup, of mustard, of hot sauce, and this and that. So people aren't leaving old sauces. They don't need to go buy. Like, you don't have to buy olive oil. You don't have to buy salt. You don't have to you don't have to buy balsamic vinegar because they're all in sealed containers that we have. You don't have to bring ketchup. You don't have to bring mustard. You don't have to bring any of that kind of stuff. You don't have to bring coffee. You don't have to, you know. We even leave chopped garlic for you in the, in the refrigerator ready to go because what's the most annoying thing, like, in the kitchen is chopping garlic, to peel the garlic, to chop the garlic. So we automatically leave each guest Yes, uh, depending upon the size of the party, a quarter cup, half cup, full cup of chopped garlic and oil ready to go right in there. We automatically leave a bowl of fruit, bananas, oranges, apples, organic bananas, um, blood oranges, lemons, limes. Just be, We basically just leave that to begin with because we figure, hey, if you're there and you have a bottle of gin, like what's better than a gin and tonic? And we also have tonic mixers and we have bottles. We have Q, Q mixers. We have all these things that are ready there, ready to go for you. Um, so we're just trying to, again, predict their next step. Like what are like, what happens when a bunch of adults and the kids go to bed and there's three couples and you're sitting there drinking a couple bottles of wine, you're hungry at night. So we've provided corn, organic corn chips and organic local salsa. It's all in the cabinet there. And, um, and it's all ready, ready to go. Um, because these are things that, you know, people have said, oh, no, we don't need any food. But then at the end of their stay, like, oh, my gosh, that came in so handy. Like this person said, um, what would they have, the tequila here or something? Came in handy for the extra 48 hours. And we left them limes already, so they already had limes. Um, so, yeah, so Jamie and I are having a lot of fun, a lot of fun doing this Airbnb. Um, and everybody who's left has just been ecstatic. So, um, um, Joel is saying you have no stone unturned, the ultimate hosts. Um, so yeah, so I have no idea what it, what, what it is, um, what it, what we have to do to qualify to be super hosts. All I know is everybody who stayed there has given us fantastic reviews. Um, let's see. Uh, Joel says, sent a copy of my restaurant review to the Time Child Record. I emailed it to you, info at com. Enjoy. Thanks, Joel. I'll have Jamie checks that email. Um, so that is awesome. Um, so brunch title of this video is brunch. What about brunch here at the restaurant? So we used to do brunch. We currently have no plans to go back to brunch right now. We currently have no plans. Um, the part of the big success of, for us for COVID was really watching our labor and consolidating our hours for the most profitable times. If you even noticed Walmart even consolidated their hours during COVID. They no longer, um, and I think it's I think it's throughout the country, but I know in many, many locations, they're not open 24 hours anymore. Like how many people are walking into Walmart at 2 a.m.? You gotta keep the heat on, you gotta keep the air conditioning on, you gotta keep the lights on. I know you have people there stocking and you know, but you still have to have people running, running, you know, you have to have a manager on duty, you still have to have all this infrastructure set up for how many people. So I'm assuming Walmart looked at their looked at their numbers, other stores too, and said, gee, if we got rid of those hours, we could save this, this, and this. So for us, it was a matter of doing the same thing. Like what what hours what hours are we in operation that we're either not making enough money or losing money? And brunch is one of those tough ones because brunch is not a, a high ticket item. You could come in and literally do all you can drink mimosas for fifteen dollars. Um, you could buy pancakes for nine dollars. You can get an omelet for twelve dollars. Um, and you have to bring in a full staff. Got to turn everything on. Got to turn the heat on, the air conditioning, whatever it is. Fire everything up. Have everything in. And it just when you looked at the numbers hard, the analytics, you're like, wow, we're really not making money here. We're really not making money. Um, and overall right now we have to watch everything. So when COVID hit, we, it helped us. And this is part of, part of what my book is, um, about, um, and when I helped other restaurants, it gave all businesses a chance to basically go back to zero based, zero based. You're starting new. Now let's go forward and figure it out. Um, so that was a really, really savior for us was going to that, that, to that, to that zero base and then working back. So brunch is not right now a part of the equation. Will it come back at some day? It might. Um, right now, our mimosa kits uh, are selling like crazy. Uh, we have smoked salmon that we sell like crazy, wild coho, wild salmon, wild smoked coho salmon, H&H &H bagels. We have all these awesome um, breakfast foods 
in fact, we'll send an email out today with that, with all of our breakfast foods, um, that people come in and buy and that they're, they're, they're eating, they're eating at home, um, brunch and things like that. And, um, it's been huge for us, the grocery section, the, the breakfast part of our grocery section. Um, the bagels are just flying out of here like crazy H&H &H bagels. So um, we'll start doing an email right now. Let me message my assistant here and we can start working on something like that for today. I didn't think about that. Um, but but that's, 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 I'd rather do that for the time being than open up for brunch. Um, um, so, but we'll see what happens. Um, can never, can never, um, discount that and say we're not going to do it. Um, it just didn't, doesn't work financially in the equation of it. So that's the story about brunch. Have had a couple people asking about it. That's why we're covering this topic. I mentioned it too on our, on our Facebook lives and somebody said, when are you going to, when are you going to? And I make jokes with people saying, I hope I never have to cook a $9 omelet again. Um, meaning that, you know, there's just not enough money in brunch, um, to do that. If we do brunch, it has to be at this point profitable for us. Um, same thing with lunch. And, um, so yeah, so that's it. Um, uh, let's see. 999s. Tonight's 999 is our, um, pulled pork sandwich. Plus, um, we're doing a vegan bratwurst. Uh, that is happening as well. Uh, there's two bratwurst with sauerkraut. That is 999. Uh, the, uh, the pulled pork, smoked pulled pork, 999. Um, let's see. What else? What else? Um, next week's 999. I haven't decided yet. Um, we've got a lot of different options, uh, a lot of cool creative stuff that we're doing. So thank you, everybody, for your support on our 999s and our takeout and, and, and everything else. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. That is it for now. Hope everybody has an amazing day. Um, stay safe if you're going out to drive. I know I had to go out and brush all the cars off this morning. And I drove around to knock the snow off. The roads here are okay. The main roads here are okay. I'm sure a lot of side roads are terrible. Um, so that's the story with that. All right, folks, have an amazing day. Uh, stay tuned for Jamie's Facebook Live later at 4 o'clock. And uh, see you then.